All right, everybody. Thank y'all so much, so much, so much for tuning in to the interview with your girl, Trish M. I am excited. I'm excited. I'm excited, you guys, because I have a very, very special guest uh, that is joining me on today. So I am super duper excited. Thank y'all for tuning in and joining us live with the interview with your girl, Trish M. Now, you know what I do. I ask this all the time. For those of you just coming in, go ahead and share, share, share with your neighbors, with your friends, with your haters, with everybody. And let them know <laughs> that we are live. We are on with the interview with Trish M. And on today, you guys, I have a super, super special guest, somebody that I've known for years. We've been uh, crossing paths for a long time now. Uh, and we're is connected to a, a an awesome woman of God, Prophetess Lestine Bell. I believe that's who I, I connected with you through. So praise God for divine connections. Amen. Amen. Well, I am super excited, you guys. I have Yakinia Marie of She CEO Global with us on today. And so this is going to be amazing for all of you guys that are watching. This is going to be amazing, amazing, amazing. We got some juicy nuggets for you. She's going to give you some stuff. I'm going to give you some stuff. It's going to be awesome. So without further delay, I'm going to go ahead and start this thing off. Yakinia, thank you so much for joining us on the interview. Thank you. For Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wonderful, uh, wonderful. Well, first of all, let me say thank you so very much, Prophetess Trish, for this honor and this opportunity to be a part of the interview. I love the title of it, the interview. Yeah. Uh, I'm just excited to see uh, what the Holy Spirit is going to do through us on today. And I'm just honored. So thank you. Thank you. Praise God. Well, you know, I before, you know, we really dive in. I really want everyone to know how awesome you are. So can you tell everybody who you are, what you do, fill them in on what the she, she CEO Global is all about? You know, tell us, let us, let us hear all about it. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Well, first of all, I'm a minister of the gospel mm -hmm. and I'm also the founder and CEO of the she CEO Global, as well as the I Am Woman of Business Network, which is our parent company. What we do is we are a training, development, and coaching company. We support women entrepreneurs, uh, profit trees who desire to increase their clientele, increase their revenue, and increase their visibility. That's straight cut and to the wow. point. That's what we do. And we help them to rise up because a lot of times women play small. You know, we may yeah. have a level of business, but we're playing small. So our goal is to push them, push them farther than where they are uh, currently. Wow. So you work with entrepreneurs for one. Uh, do they have to be at a certain level in their business to work with you for or could they have an idea about something and you work with them? What what phase do they have to be in to connect with you at She CEO Global? Majority of the women that connect with us, they're already in business. Many of them are parallelpreneurs. They may work a job and run a business as well. Uh, okay. They are full time in their business, but we also work with those individuals that have a vision. They're pregnant with purpose. Yeah. So we call those aspiring entrepreneurs, which are some of the best kind because they don't really have to go through a lot of the mistakes that many of the entrepreneurs go through before they finally figure out what to do. So right. We work with anyone that really want to cultivate their business, whether it's from conception or they're already in it and their goal is to scale it. Oh, awesome. That That's good. So do you find that with women uh, entrepreneurs that they're pregnant with purpose, what is the biggest thing that you find that's holding them back as you're working with them and she's CEO global as to why they waited so long or why they're, you know, stutter step in their way? What's the biggest, what's some of the biggest reasons why you feel like they're in that position? Well, they keep, they keep second guessing themselves. They yeah. second guess themselves and then they second guess the word that God has given, given them. You understand? Wow. Like, for example, uh, you don't need a second opinion when God speaks. And a lot of times God will speak wow. to us, but then we go and we get somebody's opinion. We go wow. and we get somebody's advice. Instead of us pressing forward, whether we have the so-called supporters or not, we will begin to second guess it. And the moment we second guess it, we begin to paralyze ourselves. 
Yeah, that's so good. That is really, really good because I can remember I've been in business now. My son is 12, uh, over 12 years, going on 13 years. And I remember that when God gave me the vision of, of it was back then, it was start launching my translation company. I remember how scared I was because it was something I'd never done before. Nobody in my family was a business owner uh, that I knew of. I've never seen it, never heard it. And so for God to give me something like that at a time like that was very scary. But I always had the mindset that if God said it, that's it, he'll make provision. Or he gave the vision, he'll bring the provision, okay? <laughs> and so the struggle was real. And there was one time where I found myself in that position uh, that you're talking about, where I was second guessing the the the, the vision. And because um, my, my, my testimony is, is that uh, when I first started my business, I made $125 in one year. And so I was like, okay, God, this is not working. We got grown folk bills. I don't know. <laughs> so I, you know, where that, that fear comes in, the doubt comes in, uh, everything started coming in. And, and so uh, I was that woman, but then it was like, God was showing me no matter what you do, that vision is not going to go away. Like you could try to find a, a way around it, try to avoid it, but it's always that inner desire is always going to be there. And so what I did was I began to go to God and I was like, okay, God, if this is what you have for me, then you got to give me strategy. You got to give me uh, uh, something that I got to, that I can do. And, and the long story short, after I, me and the Holy Spirit, I called them the, the CEO. I had to have a meeting yeah. Yeah. CEO of the vision. <laughs> and, and we sat down and we strategized. And I went from three figures to way over six figures that followed here. But if I had to have fed into the second guessing, the doubting, the fears, I would never have been in the position that I am today. So I know that woman. But one thing about me was I didn't live in that place. A lot of times, women will live in the place of second guessing or they will live in the place of fearing. They will live in the place of doubting and they won't allow God to do what he's trying to do. And that's and that's one of the reasons why they say the graveyard is the richest place in the world because we take that to our grave. And it is, it's just crazy, but I do understand where that's coming from. And so that's amazing. Um, so she's CEO, CEO Global. You deal with a lot of women that's second guessing, doubting, and, uh, and and fearing a little bit. But what do you think? What does it take? And I just want to ask you this before we move on. What's the trigger um, that gets them going? Like, do you have uh, something that you do that uh, that's eye opening for them where in that moment I get it? How do you get them past that doubt or past that second guessing? Okay. Uh, well, um, I'm going to answer that question, but it's something that you said that I want to go back to. You mentioned okay. that you talk to the Holy Spirit. You talk to your CEO, God himself, about mm -hmm. giving a strategy. One of the things yeah. I found with a lot of many of the women that I work with, they're go-getters. They're hungry. They, yeah. they do yeah. want to win. And so it's not that they're lazy. It's not that they're just sitting by waiting on somebody to give them something. Uh, can you mm -hmm. still hear me? I can hear you, but your, your, your vision went away. Okay. But I, so we I, can I, hear I'll just keep talking. Um, okay. And so one of the one of the things is this: the power is this right here. A lot of the women who are sitting dormant, uh -huh. they lack strategies. If they just had the how to, if they had the blueprint, if they had the game plan, they will yeah. execute on it. So it's about them seeking whether it's a coach, a strategist, getting information so they can know uh, what that strategy is. Now, the first person they should seek is the Holy Spirit, because the mm. Bible says. To teach us how to profit and lead us in the way that we should go in Isaiah uh, 43. Um, and so uh -huh. we should seek that. Well, I mean, seek him first. And then uh -huh. God put people in place who are trained, who are who have executed on it, who have proven, and then they can hire this person or get or be mentored by this person to help them and to guide them uh, as well. Okay. But yeah. that's your second question, I find when women, number one, they have to that they're going to go into partnership with God. Mm. Do you hear me? Yeah. They have to decide that they're going to go into partnership with God. Number one. Number two is we move forward when we have clarity. 
Yes. When you lack yes. clarity, it, 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 it breeds paralysis. Mm -hmm. It breeds indecisiveness. It breeds confusion. So it's very important that we, number one, partner with God and understand we don't have to do this by ourselves because mm -hmm. the word tells us with God, all things are possible. And number two is we have to see clarity without trying to figure every step out. Yeah. So God, like, um, like, for example, I'll share a testimony with you. In 2012, when the Lord told me to host my first com conference called Kingdom Entrepreneur, which is give, he had given me, I was terrified because I had been out of the world of business for years. I really didn't have the connections like I used to have and all these mm -hmm. excuses and limitations I was trying to make. So my first right. two or three months, I didn't even obey God. Wow. You know, I, yeah. I, didn't, yeah. I didn't I didn't obey God. But what I did was I finally said, you know what, God, I'm just gonna believe you. And I called the Sheridan Hotel while I was working a nine the nine dollar an hour job. I called the Sheraton Hotel and then I scheduled the room and I said, God, I don't know how you're going to pay for this, but I'm stepping out by faith. And, right. and God, God connected me to information. He gave me information that made me go out and seek the sponsorship. See, I had to do something. You know, right. I couldn't sit back and wait on God. But when somebody told me you should seek sponsorships, I was like, what is a sponsor? There's uh -huh. like people who have lot money for various uh, events and things, initiatives you have going on. So I mm -hmm. started calling up strangers. Mm. Asking them. You know what I'm saying? Oh, That's oh. how I was able to raise almost $10,000 to host my first conference. Wow. So you say you just started calling strangers. That's cold calling. Well, well, this, is, this, is, this is what I did. I went to um, the chamber here and I spoke to the vice president of the chamber in Birmingham and I asked him, I said, because I had my vision for the conference. I knew who I wanted to speak, what subject matter experts. I said, I want to own an operator of Chick-fil-A because that's my favorite fast food. I want me an attorney. I want me a medical professional. And he started just giving me names. Wow. And I called them up and say, hey, listen, my name is Yakini Marie Duff. You don't know me, but so-and-so, so-and-so referred me to you. I'm hosting a business event. They say you may be interested in sponsoring it. You mm. may be interested in speaking. That is, And so they listened to me because I name dropped. I know that. And mm -hmm. when I made the phone call, I met with them and I asked for the money. My first sponsor sponsored me for $2,500, never saw me a day in his life. He had been sending my present for less than an hour, but because wow. I cast a vision, because people buy you before they buy anything that you're right. Yeah. And because yeah. I sold the vision in less than 30 minutes, he was like, I'll sponsor you for $2,500. Wow. So yes. you you can't be afraid. What I'm getting out of this is you can't be afraid to open up your mouth. A oh. closed mouth doesn't get fed. Okay. So yeah. you got to open up your mouth and declare and decree and let somebody hear about your vision because that's the only way that you're going to make those divine connections if somebody hears what it is that you're doing and they say, you know what? I want to connect with you. I want to be a part of what you're doing. Wow. That's that's awesome. Yes. Woman of God, the, the Bible reminds us, I, I'm often reminded of this, and I share this with the women, is that God said he will bless the works of our hands. We have to give him something to work with. You know mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. is why when God gives us instructions, it's our responsibility to move because faith is an action word. It's a, it's a word that's in motion. And yeah. so whether you're whether you're in your prayer closet, giving birth and praying out the, the divine instructions, see, that's laying your hands to something. When you're researching, you're online researching, like you, I'm sure, was researching about other translation companies. See, that's laying your hands mm -hmm. to something. When you're making the phone calls and you're setting the appointments or you're creating content, that's laying your hands to something. But sitting back yeah. watching television all day and being lazy and procrastinating and still <laughs> asking God why not, you understand? You're not giving God no. anything to work with. Right. And you know, it's easy to get in that slump. Some people anyway, during this quarantine and chilling, uh, they watch more Netflix than anything. Oh, yeah. Instead of putting your hand to the plow and, and just doing what God has told you to do, you got to get off Netflix. You got to uh, get off that couch. You got to figure out how to make this thing work, how to make it happen. And yeah, you're going to be, and I'll be honest, you're going to be uncomfortable. Like you're going to uh, uh, have to, and I tell people this all the time, woman of God, I say, you have to do it scared. You have to do it knowing that not everybody's going to connect with you. Not everybody's not going to give you a yes. And that's okay. But if you keep trying, you're going to 
find the, the divine connection that God has for you. If it's like uh, who was the one that did the light bulb and he he messed up over ten thousand. Edison. Who was it? Edison. Edison. He, he did it over ten thousand times, and, mm -hmm. and and he kept trying. He you know the fear of messing up was uh, to me it was gone probably after I don't know how many times it takes. But after about the tenth time, he like listen, I'm just. You know, whatever, we just gonna figure this thing out. And so we can't give up. And then you said the end result was was you made how much ten ten thousand? Well, I raised almost ten thousand dollars in order to pay for the conference. Over ten thousand dollars to pay for your event. That's amazing. Wow. So you have been doing some great great things and you've been working with a lot of phenomenal women you've taken them to next level i i came to one of your events not too long ago um and it was amazing had a wonderful time you connected me actually with uh, one of my i guess you call it vendors i don't know for my company for um our marketing and stuff and and so i was so excited to have made that i'm telling you when you connect with people uh that helps open your eyes see things that you didn't see before and, and a lot of women some women are introverts some women don't um don't i guess get in with the crowds or different things. i'm an introvert i don't like hanging around a lot of people i'm the guy i'm i'm the only daughter of i got I got five brothers, so it's six of us. So I, I, I wasn't used to growing up. I wasn't used to hanging around a lot of women and talking and just, you know, having clicks and all of that. So I wasn't used to that. I had to grow into that because I understood that if I wanted to go to the next level, I had to connect with women. I had to connect with women that were doing bigger things than me, that were on the same level as me, that was surpassing anything that I could ever dream. I I, I, that, I mean, just different faces, different kinds of women all over the world, because my mindset is, it was and still is, is that I can learn something from anybody. I, I'm serious. I can find somebody that, that's making uh, $100 a week and ain't nowhere close to making the finances that I'm making. I can look at them and I can find something and learn something from them. You know, I don't look at anybody like you don't have anything to offer me. You ain't on my level. I can't connect with you. I can't talk to you. Now I understand there are certain, you know, certain connections you don't need to have. But if I'm around you, I can I'm I'm always having my eyes open, my ears open, because I can learn something in every situation. And I think if that if we had that type of mindset that we we need to connect with people, we need to learn, we need to grow, that you know, it will surpass anything we can ever imagine. Because I'm telling you that we we can't do this alone. God says, and here's the thing I love about God. God says, I, if we think about the scripture about giving, it shall be given back unto you a good measure, pressed down, shaking together, run it over. We think about if we give our gifts, we give our talents, we give our money, we give this, we give that. God didn't say, I'm going to come down and give to you. He said, no, I'm going to cause man to give to you. So because I connected with you, you gave me something that could take me to another level. You see what I'm saying? Because I'm positioning myself to receive. I'm positioning myself to give to you. You give to me, I give back to you. And it's reciprocated. And that's how we win. Like, like we just have that mindset, woman of God. Uh, Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. We can't have a crap mentality. Uh, we mm -hmm. have to understand that there's enough out here for everyone. You understand? Yeah. There's no reason for us to be covetous or jealous of our sisters or our brothers in the world yeah. of business because the, the best way to actually draw and attract things to yourself is to be a generous person. You yeah. I love connected individuals. I love, you know, I just really do. I want to see people win. I genuinely want to see people win. It doesn't matter to me if they make more money than me, they get the biggest right. prize than me. You know, I want us all to represent the kingdom. I represent kingdom entrepreneurs who um, who God wants to dominate in this marketplace. And we cannot yeah. do that acting like and thinking like the world. Right, exactly. You know, um, and and we gotta we gotta be okay with the struggle that comes with the win. <laughs> yes. you know, we gotta we gotta be okay with the struggle that comes with the win, and that's yes. why I want to uh, talk about this. So you you're a woman of God, you're a woman of God, you're a woman of faith. 
how has God challenged you to look in so that you can be better out? Now, this could be looking in on a personal level, on a business level, on a financial level, you know, uh, as we shift and in, in going from business to life or whatever you want to lead. How has God really, because, you know, this is the interview podcast. So we pulling out like all these nuggets that we've been giving out. I know this helps people to look in so they can figure out how they can be better because, that's the whole moral of the story. We want to grow. So if whether it's still in with business or whatever you want, whatever direction you want to go in, how has God challenged you to look in so that you could be better out? Well, I'll say this. I have been on a journey, woman of God, since 2012 with mm -hmm. God exposing different things to me regarding me. Because a lot of times we're deceived when it comes to us. You know, we think we got it together. And so God had to point out different things that I was dealing with. I mean, I dealt with the spirit of pride. He let me know, you know, wow. I mean, I just, I didn't, I didn't know it. And then he, he let me know that I was dealing with the spirit of fear. You understand? Wow. He let uh -huh. me know I was dealing with the spirit of indecisiveness because I kept second guessing. That's how I can, I, that's why I'm able to discern when people are, because mm -hmm. I don't it, you know, mm -hmm. um, so I had to, I had to, and oftentimes I'll do seasons of separation, not isolation, but separation. Yeah. Seasons yeah. Of separation just so I can. And there's a book that I read by Dr. Cindy Trim, the 40 day soul fast. And I mm -hmm. really like that book because it, it's 40 days. And it's strictly dealing with you. You understand? It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's not what you're not eating, but it's what's eating you. So it's mm -hmm. really about you. Cause see, Business, your business, your family, your finances, your health, everything falls with the, the, the spiritual is the foundation. So if mm -hmm. there's a shaky foundation, you understand that everything else is going to shake. And so I'm oftentimes working on me like me. I'm a single. I know you're married, but I'm single. And so mm -hmm. the beautiful part of this is that when I do connect with my destiny husband, because I've been working on me, I will bring any mess over into the relationship. You understand? Yeah. And so, yeah. and so I'm, like, oh, I'm constantly asking the Holy Spirit to show me me. I'm constantly mm -hmm. reading books that will really um, shine a light on anything that I may be dealing with that I'm totally unaware of. I do spend time, a lot of time in prayer and uh, praying in the spirit and getting silent before God. Uh, so mm -hmm. that I, and I'm constantly asking him questions. You understand? And like, mm -hmm. I remember when I was when I was going through a self-sabotaging season, um, this is when I was actually dating. And it seemed like every time I would meet someone and get close mm -hmm. to them, I would just totally just break the relationship up for absolutely no reason. And, wow. I, and I didn't know what, what the reason why, because I, I never asked the Lord. And But when I went to the God and I finally just said, why do I do this? Why do mm -hmm. I do this? You know, why do I self-sabotage things when everything is going wonderful? And when he revealed to me the root of it is fear, you fear that they're going to do something wrong. So you go ahead and self-sabotage it before they can do something to hurt you. Wow. So I had to deal with that internal situation because uh, when we do something one way, it actually spills over into our business. Yeah, see, yeah, I can treat a client like that. I can treat a partnership like I, that. I can, you see what I'm saying? I can treat a network member like that. And so that's why you have to deal with yourself so that, uh, because when you are in a healed place, in a whole place, your business, your ministry, your family will look like that. Mm, wow, that's good. Oh my gosh. So, wow, God is really so. What you just told us was a mouthful, you know, about how God really told told you to. You really got to look in because you're prideful. Uh, you you're fearful. Uh, you got a lot of things going on right now, and and. And well, I was. I, I, I was prideful. I was prideful. It wasn't get the full. You hear me, woman of God? I was prideful. That was years mm -hmm. ago. Oh. Yeah, yeah. And 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 you weren't in a position. You were put. You were taking yourself out of a position to where you could, where you couldn't really get the fullness of what God had for you because you had dismantled uh, pride. You had dismantled here and so in essence you were missing out on some of the things that god had for you so god had to take you through a process of becoming yeah. whole and i love 
who said you got that book, The 40 Day Soul Fast. I'm definitely going to check that out by Dr. Cindy Trim. And a lot of you said you read books and you you did a lot of prayer and you asked God questions. And that's one of the things that I love the most. I tell people a lot of times, if you 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 better ask God questions. If you want to know something, like if I have a meeting with the CEO of my business, which is my, my father, my king, I got to ask him some questions about what we're doing, what direction we're going. What do you have me to do? Um, how would you have me to flow? Or do I sign this contract? Do I not do this? So I have to ask God questions. One of the guys, you remember how the old folk used to say, to say uh, you better not ask God, and then don't be questioning God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that stuck with me for years. Like, you've been not questioning God. Don't you question God. Now, whatever you do, don't question God. That stuck with me years until I was old enough to know better and I was able to do better because God specifically tells us in his word that we have not because we ask not. And, and we have to start asking God some serious questions. So I would suggest you, uh, those that are hearing, hearing me, write down 10 questions, uh, five to 10 questions that you want to ask God. And I promise you, God will give you confirmation, revelation, affirmation in his timing. He will answer those questions, but you got to make sure that you're prepared to get the answer because sometimes the answer ain't going to be what you want it to be. It's going to be neat and what you need to hear. So, so ask God questions. That's a challenge for our audience that's listening. Five to 10 questions. Begin to write some stuff down that you can ask God because what the woman of God said just then, it was just so it was so powerful and just being transparent with us. Um, and you talked about your, you know, being prideful years ago of being fearful. What has been one of your biggest challenges this year that, and, and how have you overcome? I know we're all being challenged right now with COVID-19, but what is something that, that you're being challenged with right now or, or have been, not right now, but have been challenged with this year and how have you overcome that? One of the things that I was being challenged with, but it was a good challenge, is mm -hmm. because my my granddaughter was living with me full time. She just moved back with her dad about a, uh, a week and a half ago. Okay. So one of the challenges was, especially when this COVID-19 happened, I had to go from, you know, I was already running my business from my home and then taking her to school every day, picking her up from school, going to any school events and all of that. Uh, mm -hmm. What a lot of people do, they have children. But when the COVID happened, mm -hmm. you know, now I had to go into a, turn into a, um, what is it, at home school teacher and just all these different things. And so juggling all of that and, and making her feel love, going through the school, uh, doing my work, uh, you know, and really incorporating her in some of the things I did, like webinars and stuff like that. A lot of the ladies who are connected to me, they know my granddaughter because she will come into a webinar class, master class and hi, everybody, you know. And so, so, so I would say that on like the family side, but I would say, um, I would say I don't really deal with the focus situation because I can pretty much kind of steer myself to like just shut down and do what I need to do. Yeah. Um, I, I had to, well, cause my company took a shift, right? So I had to really zone in whether it was time. So I will say this, God will give us a vision, uh -huh. right? Mm -hmm. But God, also can elevate the vision which yeah. means he will give you extensions to the vision uh -huh. but we cannot be afraid to shift like there's a book called who move my cheese we can't be afraid to actually shift where god is shifting us because we will start to feel like we're being disobedient you understand? Mm -hmm. We will start to feel like I'm getting outside of God's will when in yeah. actuality God is shifting you for greater. But we will hold on to the familiar. We'll hold on to what he gave us five years ago. You understand? Ooh. When God yeah. wants to take us higher, He's He God is a diverse God. So he's adding extensions to what he has given us. And some of us, he's shifting us out of what he gave us to bring us over into another level of ourselves. You understand? Wow, because we are gifted and there's layers to us, but we can't tap into those, that dormant ability if we hold on to the old. So Ooh, it's just me getting out of my head of saying, okay, I'm gonna step out. I feel God shifting me um, into, uh, to, to really focus on the CCO brand. And so in me coming into agreement with that and not feeling guilty because of that. Wow, that you said a lot again. Okay, so let me break this down. What you said was powerful. You said, you know, God could give you vision, but then he could give you elevation 
from the vision. So it means that the vision has to go higher. So what, what, so I, way I received it, like what God gave me 13 years ago, 12, 13 years ago for my business to go to the next level won't necessarily work today because he's taken me to another level of doing things uh, and and elevating my mind and elevating my business is another level because there's an elevation at hand. And it's, it also reminds me of marriage to the way uh, my husband, we, we counsel married, uh, married couples and we tell them a lot of times the person that 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 spouse was five years ago is is probably 90 99 percent gonna be a different person than they were today because the essence of it you have to keep growing you have to keep evolving and if you're trying to love somebody the way you loved them five years ago you might be missing out on their elevation on their next level and you know they they could be like well that's what i needed five years ago but today i need something different so my what my business needed 13 years ago needs something different today what my marriage needed five years ago needs something different today because guess what they both evolved they both uh, uh went to another level in in the vision and 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 what's next for the vision whether it's marriage whether it's business whether it's a relationship whether it's with you on a job and you looking for promotion. Like you don't want you, God is showing you that there's elevation for you on your job. But if you, and here's the thing, and this is so good because I got so much out of it. Here's the thing, if you're believing for promotion on your job, you can't do, do what you've been doing the last five years. If you want elevation, then you gotta be doing something to show that you deserve elevation, that you're ready for elevation that your elevation is now. And so this is this is so good, it's so yummy, um, how to evolve. Let me evolve. give you an example. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me give you an example of elevation, okay? Um, let's say the instant God spoke to you about expansion, and he gave uh -huh. you the word expansion, okay? Uh -huh. And uh -huh. so you begin to pray, you birth that out, you praying in the spirit about it, and then you're going online doing a level of research. And so uh -huh. you're, now you take your company, your translation company, and your translation company, which is based in Birmingham, Alabama, but you're doing business on an international level, okay? Mm -hmm. But there's mm -hmm. other people uh, like you that desire to open a translation company, but they don't know how, but you have a 13 year blueprint, right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. so now you go from, uh, in addition, and not but, uh, or, or, but it's and. So uh -huh. now your translation company has a, uh, a an academy that's teaching individuals specifically who wants to own and start their own translation company because you have the blueprint. And not yeah. only that, now what you're doing is these individuals that you're training with your system, you also have a model where they can franchise your uh -huh. translation company. And so mm -hmm. all they have to do is take your model, you're showing them how to get clients, how to do X, Y, Z, but they're now located in multiple areas of the United States and your mm -hmm. company gets a residual of every sale that comes into them. So now yep. you have expanded your company just from your translation company to now training people how to own one and now franchising your company. That is what you call next level. That's next level. <laughs> yes. Expansion on a business, international conglomeration, all of that. I love it. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. So what, what are, um, let me see. Uh, what are ways that your faith is going to another level? Oh, my faith is going to another level by identifying time wasters, Ooh. moving them out of my That's life good. and replacing them with things that will take me to listen. I am a huge believer that you have to work on yourself. Mm -hmm. and first spiritually like they got a lot of personal development books out here but i am constantly working on myself you should sharpen your skills in the world of business but you have to work on yourself so things that you will normally do that's time wasters we have relationships that have no purpose to them we're watching television all day that has no purpose to them we're reading books that has no substance to them so oh. i am very intentional about my quiet time with god i'm very intentional about understanding the word of god not just reading the word but understanding the word of god I'm very intentional about buying books and reading books and listening to audios that will feed me who well, God has given these gifts revelations so they can write. You understand? So number one is identifying time. Yeah, yeah. You understand? See, it's very important to know what you should do, but it's also very, very important to know what you shouldn't do. You understand? And so just removing things mm -hmm. out of my life mm -hmm. serves absolutely no 
purpose. Not make an excuse oh. why I need to return your call, why I need to return your text, why I need to return your mm -hmm. email, if there's no purpose to it. And I'm filling that up with something that has purpose to it. That is how I'm growing myself spiritually and naturally. Wow. that That's huge identifying time wasters yes. and and I, and I want you guys now listen some of you need to hear this because some of you are on the phone too much calling texting or it could be tv and and sometimes you have to be okay with going through a season where god is you can't talk to everybody you can't talk to your girlfriend like you used to talk to her because you're in a new season and god is doing a new thing and so god is trying to change and elevate and increase it do all of these things and so there has to be some cutback and so identifying time wasters is huge. And I think especially for the season and the time that we're in with the COVID-19 and everything happening, that we, it's easy, it's easier to waste time. Uh, for me, I found myself wasting time going to the refrigerator and the pantry. I'm like, okay, yeah. that, that time, go to the refrigerator, go to the pantry, sit down, eat the snacks, no, now, not only did it waste my time, but it's expanding my waste, okay? okay. <laughs> so, the truth I, on a strict diet, fasting, praying, going to that next level. I've even started a health as wealth club, uh, you know, where we're challenging each other to exercise and all of that stuff. And so uh, I'm on that, I'm in that same place with you. And that's one of the things that I identified as, a, as one of the things that I identified as a time waster was the, the, the going back and forth to that pantry and that refrigerator during COVID-19. And I'm using things like that as an excuse for the season that we're in. And we can't use that as an excuse as to why you blowing up and not blowing up in a good way. Come on, y'all. Come on, repeat that one more time. <laughs> okay, can you get an excuse about why you blowing up in a negative way? <laughs> so, um, how how are you challenging others right now? Uh, ministry, business, relationally, whatever, to look in so that they could be better out. Are uh, are you doing that in any kind of way, challenging people? I know that's part of what you do for from a business perspective too. So. Absolutely. Well, one of the things I'm doing currently, a woman of God, is I'm hosting what we call the 40 days of kingdom principles for business wealth. So every morning I go live on my Facebook at 7.30 a.m. Today, today is day 18. And so wow. I give them a principle every single day to apply to their business, but they can also apply to their lives. You understand? And so I'm challenging them based on the word of God. You understand? And so we, we like today's principle was rest while you wait. You know, mm -hmm. don't grow anxious, but rest while you wait. So I'm challenging wow. them. And so because I am highlighting a different principle, these principles will touch five areas, spiritual, social, physical, financial, and emotional, mental, which covers every aspect of our lives. You understand? Growing spiritual, wow. spending that time with God, spending that time in the word, uh, really understanding who God the Father is, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, because you can't understand who you are until you understand the Trinity. All right. And then uh, socially building relationships, us taking our time to cultivate the relationships that we actually have, checking on people, not being selfish, but being selfless um, financially. Really, you know, um, I have a giveaway that I gave you and you was here um, uh, regarding the money. I'm, I am really serious about individuals really diversifying their portfolio financially doing what they love and making smart money moves. We should not be on Amazon all day shopping. What are you doing? <laughs> Where are you going? You understand? But we should be looking, we, we should be studying on how to invest, how to invest into some of the stock where they're going to drop, you understand, tremendously, right? And then physically, like you said, I love what you said because I found myself doing that as well. And I call, and then I was gaining weight. I don't put myself on the diet, honey. And so <laughs> I, I am serious. There's certain things I'm not eating. I'm not eating after seven o'clock. It's just certain things I'm not going to do. Cause I'm like, I'm like, I'm not going to be on the show my 600 pound life because right. a, lack of, a lack of discipline. That is not going to happen. So, you know, uh, resting, um, get you enough rest, drinking enough water and exercising as well. I had a great time exercising this morning and then mentally emotionally adding yourself to the calendar a lot of times we're always doing everything for everybody else but we never keep the appointment with ourselves so your appointment with yourself may look may look like just resting and doing nothing 
You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Just relaxing and do. I'm not, no, you're not surfing on social media. You're not watching TV. You know, you're just relaxing, relaxing your mind from all of the running. Or, just, or if you want to watch a quick movie, if that's what you want to do, you do that. Don't feel guilty. Yeah. Rest and procrastination are two different things, okay? Mm -hmm. And when you know you handle your business, well, you can sit back and you can actually do, you can do you. All right. So if you're going to do your spouse and do your kids and do everybody else, you have to do you. So keep your appointment with yourself. Wow. That was so good. Rest and procrastination are two totally different things. Totally. And we should never feel guilty when we're resting. Right. Oh, that's so good. That's yummy. <laughs> I love it. Um, so your 40 days of kingdom principles, is that on your personal page or on your business page? What is that on on Facebook? That's on my personal page at Yakinia Marie. That's Yakinia Marie. That's my personal page. Okay. Yakinia Marie. If you guys want to go back and catch the, the re is it videos or? Yes. Or all the replays on the page. Yeah. All the replays are on the page. So go and look up and her name is scrolling across the screen. So you can uh, find her on Facebook and go back and look at her 40 days of kingdom principles. I'm going to go back and watch those too. I didn't know you were on, on those. So she's on day 18. Okay. That's awesome. Woman of God. We're almost done. I just got a couple more questions. If, if you could uh, give words of encouragement to someone that's listening right now, what would that be to them in this season of their life? My, my um, encouragement would be this. Don't just read. I want you to study this right here. Okay. I want you to go to Gen the book of Genesis, chapter mm -hmm. one, verses 26 through 28. Okay. Well, okay. the Bible says, let us make, let us, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, let us make man in our image, right? And in our likeness, and let them have dominion. I, I, I really challenge you to understand what does that mean? When God said have dominion, what does that mean? When God said be fruitful and multiply, what does that mean? I want you to really dissect that because when you understand what that means, then I believe you will walk taller. See, most people walk small because they don't understand who they are. They, they're they're suffering, with, suffering with identity crisis. But once you understand that you're made in the very essence of Elohim, the great I am, it will force you to walk tall. You won't stand in the mirror telling yourself how inferior you are, how ugly you are, how nobody won't do this. You will stand there with all power, understanding that I'm made in the image of my father, God. You understand? Know yeah. So I'm going to take it straight to the word because woman of God, I truly under, I truly believe that when we come to a point of agreeing with what God says about us, we will not allow somebody's words to move us. Even if somebody validates you in a positive way, you're going to say thank you, but you walking tall will not be predicated on somebody validating you because you understand that you've already been validated. You understand that God created you to dominate in this earth. And anything that doesn't align with domination, you know that you're playing small. And that is why you refuse to stay stagnant and at a small place. Wow. If you're not dominating in your area, in your gift zone, and your gift and your talent, your calling, then you're playing small. That's what I, oh, that's. You are. Yeah, and, and guess what, woman of God, we dominate at our own level. Cause see, you may be brand new and you may feel like, well, I'm not dominating like so-and-so, so-and-so, well, maybe so-and-so, so-and-so been in business 20 years. Okay. Dominate at your level. And what happens is when you dominate at your level, God takes you higher. And then when you dominate at that level, you guys take you higher. There's always another level. Wow. That's it. That is so good. That is so good. And God won't elevate you to the next level until you show that you can dominate at the current level. You have to be obedient. Yes. Like and domination is inevitable. Mm. Never compare ourselves to anyone. Celebrate other people, but never compare yourself to anyone. Mm. That's good. That's good. Yes, I know one thing that I purpose and my husband keeps saying this, we are we are thriving and not surviving in this season, uh, meaning that we're going to go to another level. We're going to do everything that God called us to do. We're not going to be hindered. We're not going to be denied. We're not going to be delayed. We're not going to find excuses as to why we can't dominate, as to why we can't do, as to why we can't be. And so, you know, 
there, everybody, I hope you just heard the woman of God. She that was powerful. That if you want really want the next level, you got to dominate at your current level. And so, because when you do that, you show God that He could trust you with the next level. If God can't trust you with the next level, He's not going to give it to you. What He's going to do is He's going to give it to somebody else. And until you prove to God that you can be trusted, it. you that's the only way uh, that you could get elevated. One thing I told I, I preached this one time like, you know, how you play a, a, a game of space, mm -hmm. and look at your hand, and you're like, Oh, I ain't got this, or this, this, and you want to throw your hand in. God showed me, He said, Listen, He said, The same hand I gave you, I gave to somebody else. He said, You got to prove that, that, that the hand that you want to throw in, they're gonna take that same hand, they're gonna take it, and they're gonna dominate and win. Mm -hmm. That's right. So, so you could look, like, watch this. You could look like hey, I look at it with me. I could say, Well, God, I lost at only making $125. I quit in one year, so I'm just gonna quit. Somebody else, a gazillionaire, had probably the same. They, they didn't just lose $125 or to only make $125, they went bankrupt, they went beyond what I did. But that's what makes a millionaire, gazillionaire, tr a trillionaire who they are because they don't give up. They they look at the hand and say, "Oops, I went bankrupt. Never mind." Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, they figure out a way to dominate and win. Okay, and when they win at that level. They figure out what what next looks like. So y'all, I hope y'all heard her. Don't get stuck at the level that you're on because with God, there's always greater. There's always more with God. God has owns a cattle on a thousand hills. Are you serious? He always has more. It's just that we don't have the desire for more. We get we get um uh, stagnant and and stuck in positions and we're not ready for next. We haven't shown God that we're ready for what's next. So this has been phenomenal woman of God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um I do want to ask, uh, do you have anything coming up, anything going on? Tell the people how they can connect with you, follow you, uh, 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 join in, in anything, any program, anything that you got going on. Can you share with the audience that's listening right now? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, first of all, I want to give everybody a gift um because i do truly believe that everybody can generate seven income streams doing what they love so i mm -hmm. want to give them my gift create seven income streams around your brand uh, so i'm not giving you an idea like do this product no this is what you are doing and so you can go to she ceo global dot com she ceo global dot com um and you can actually in a pop-up will pop up for you to actually get access uh to that gift and then uh, you will actually be on our website so you'll see the program we have going on with the she ceo revenue generator this is an online academy that actually teaches you online marketing and different things like that to support you in the growth of your business uh, and then lastly i want to invite all the women entrepreneurs and aspiring entrepreneurs to connect with our online facebook group um, called SheCO Global. You can go to SheCOGlobal.net, SheCOGlobal.net, and you can connect with us inside of our mentoring group. Oh, wait. Okay. Hold on. You said SheCOGlobal.net. Yes, she yes, dot com takes you to our website to get our free gift, and okay. then dot net takes you to our online group, I mean, our Facebook group. Okay. So I just put that in the comments, everybody. The sheceoglobal.com, and I put an arrow that says free gift from Yakinia Marie. Now I'm going to put uh, www.sheceoglobal.net. Global.net. And what are they getting there? That, um, that's, that's our online Facebook community, our, uh, our Women Entrepreneurs Facebook community called SheCO Global. And then they can like our fan page, which is CCO Global. They can just search CCO Global and everything will come up. <laughs> okay. Awesome stars. So I just put both of those in there. Guys, listen, don't miss it. You get this free gift from Yakinia Marie and tell them what that free gift is that they're going to get at sheceoglobal.com. Oh, let me edit that. Yeah. Okay. Um, Global. W 
CEO, G L O B A L dot com. Okay. Okay, so in that gift, they're going to actually get seven strategies along with two bonuses. So it's a total of nine different strategies on how to take one product and multiply it in nine different ways in order to generate revenue around your current brand. And if you don't have a brand, then of course you will have some ideas on on the level your business can grow to. Okay, seven strategies on how to say that again. Seven strategies on how to create revenue from mm -hmm. From your brand. From your brand. Got it. Mm -hmm. All right. So I just put that in there with the correct. Yes. And it popped up. Good. You can see it in the link. It, the She's CEO Global dot pages is on there. Is yep. the, you get the free gift. You can see it in the comments. Please make sure you get that today. I That's the one I got, wasn't it? That's, that's the one you got. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's awesome. You guys, it's amazing. Please make sure that you get that. Uh, definitely uh, some good information. I can say that I tried, I had done everything on her list, except for there was one thing on there. And I can promise you that everything on that list that she gives you, it works. Mm -hmm. It works. And so you make sure you go to she CEO Global dot com to get this information okay so uh woman of god did you have anything else that you want to leave with the people before we get off i would say give yourself a chance to win mm. don't be so quick to give up give yourself a chance to win and i mean i because th there's just some great things that god have for us but we just have to just make a decision by you know, all means necessary. I am not going to stop. I don't care how it looks. Mm. You understand? Because see, the enemy is the he's the master of imagery. You understand? Of making you think you're going to lose. But you have to tell yourself, although it looks like I'm losing, I know that I'm not. Because when the dust settles, I'm going to be standing. Right? Yes. Yeah. So give yourself permission to win. Give yourself permission to go higher, even if your your connections are not going higher. You understand? Don't yeah. look at them because sometimes we can look at the people around us and nobody is moving, but don't let that be your excuse of why you won't move. Be the example of what it looks like when you go after your goals and your vision. Mm, that's good. Give yourself a chance to win. That's awesome. And um, one thing I know is this woman of God is awesome. She's a businesswoman. She's focused. She's steadfast. She's determined. She's reliable. Um, you know, if you have not connected with her, please make sure you connect. Please make sure you get the free gift. Please make sure you give yourself a chance to win. Like she said, she gave us so many juicy nuggets that I'm, I just got so full today. So thank you, Yakinia Marie, for being awesome, being amazing, for sharing your gifts, your talents, your anointing with us on today. And I believe that because you gave, God is going to give back unto you. So thank you so much. Thank you to our audience for tuning in to the interview with your girl, Trish M. <laughs> Thank you, woman of God. I greatly appreciate you. And I just, I, I love what you stand for. I love everything that you're doing to empower God, kingdoms, uh, kingdom people. And I just thank you and your husband for being a, a, an example. So thank you for the honor. Oh, praise God. Thank you. I appreciate you, sis.